Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I have a really interesting quilt pattern that I'm gonna show you how to make. It's called Plaza. This is designed by Debbie Maddie of Calico Carriage Designs. And the reason I like it is because it's got these patchwork things that almost look like they're set on top of these big diamond shaped pieces. Now, this is my favorite kind of quilt. It looks very fancy, but it's actually not that difficult to make. So if you are a newer quilter, you've only made a couple of quilts and you wanna make something a little bit more complex, this will be just perfect. And I'm gonna show you how to do all the steps. Now this is a fat quarter pattern and we need to choose from the three sizes that are included in the pattern. We have an extra long twin, a big queen size or a really big king size. And I'm gonna make the extra long twin. So we're going to need 10 fat quarters, two and an eighth yards of a background, seven eighths of an inner border, outer border two and five eighths, and then we'll need some backing and binding, but we'll talk about those when we get to that part of the quilt. I'm going to use this beautiful fat quarter bundle of Kona solids. Now the pattern has lovely fabrics in blue and white, and the fabrics were designed by Debbie Maddie but I think that I would like to do something a little more colorful. It's always fun to experiment with different colors, colors that are not shown on the pattern. If you only make things in your favorite colors, well, if I only made things in my favorite colors, they would all be purple and green. But I find when I try new colors, I'm almost happy every time when the quilt is done. There are occasions when quilts don't turn out how I expect. The colors look different. But I do find that I enjoy the process so much. I enjoy seeing new colors. I enjoy, enjoy seeing new combinations. So always feel free to try making quilts in new colorways, because you never know. That might turn out to be your next favorite color. Here are the 10 fat quarters that I'm going to use. Now five of them are going to be for these little squares and the other five are for these bigger darker pieces so i'm going to use the five darker ones for those bigger darker pieces and the lighter ones for the squares the only other thing we need is a background and i'm going to use this nice solid bone you always want to iron your fat quarters nice and flat before you cut they're folded so tight they have a lot of fold lines and wrinkles, and if you get them ironed really flat, they will cut out much more accurately. I've got the fabric all ironed up, and I've got two stacks because there's only two different cuts we're going to make. Now, I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but I've made a lot of Debbie Maddie's patterns. They're very easy to follow. Once you have all of the colorful patches cut up, we need to cut up some of the background. All right, everything is cut and we just have two different blocks to make. For our first block, we're gonna need both of the big squares, and we're gonna make half square triangles with all of these. So the first step for half square triangles is to mark the back of the block with a very light line. I'm gonna use a light pencil line there, and I'm just going from corner to corner, just very lightly so that I can see it. All right, we're taking both squares over to the machine. And all we have to do is take one dark and put the light square right on top. They're exactly the same size and stitch down both sides of that drawn pencil line. Now my presser foot is exactly a quarter inch wide and that's how far away we want to be from the line. So I'm just gonna go down one side
and then I'm going to spin it around and go down the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of my squares. Once those are done, all we have to do is cut right along that drawn line. You're still, you're just cutting from corner to corner. That's where the line is. And now we'll take these two halves to the ironing board. The easiest way to iron these is with the light fabric down on your ironing board. Then you can kind of peel this open and that when you peel it, finger press it a little bit, it keeps that seam nice and straight. We don't want it to go up or down. We want it nice and straight. So I kind of press it with my fingers. Use a dry iron and then a little bit of steam. The last step is to cut off these little extra pieces here. They're called dog ears. So I like to just use a sharp pair of scissors and cut it like that. Of course, you could take it to your board and use your rotary blade if you like, but scissors gives a nice, neat cut. Once all those half square triangles are done, take your smaller squares over to the machine. All we're going to do with these is make some four patch blocks. So we're going to get one dark, one light, and then a different color that's going to go here. This is going to go here. So to make these, it's very easy. I like to put them right sides together like this and then take it over to the machine like this and stitch along that edge. And I like to leave it there on the machine and then slide the other pair over and stitch that. Now we want all the seam allowances to go towards the darker color. So I'm just going to press this like that, seam allowances that way. And this one also towards the dark, but that means it's going in the opposite direction. Now all we have to do is this last seam. And look, the seam allowances are going in opposite directions. So once we match it up here and line it up, it's very easy to tell that that intersection will match. And we're just gonna stitch here. and then finger press this seam to one side. And that's all we have to do. I've got all the patchwork done here. Now there's just these two blocks. This is why I said, perhaps if you were a newer quilter and wanted to do something fancy, this is a good project because all we had to make was these two simple blocks. And the fanciness of the pattern is going to come now that we start laying it out. This quilt gets laid out in quarters. So there's going to be one, two, three, four quarters of the quilt. So I'm gonna lay out the first quarter and then I'm going to lay out a second quarter. And that's all the layouts we have to do because we're once we get those two done, we're gonna repeat them for the second half of the quilt. So let me get this first quarter all laid out. Now the instructions have a very nice diagram that I am following so that I can get all the pieces laid out in the correct order. So this step is pretty relaxing. You just keep laying the pieces out. There. I now have two of the quarters laid out. Here's the upper right corner. Here's the upper left corner. And they are mirror images, the way the blocks are all placed. Now one hint that I want to give you. When you lay these little guys out, you can lay them out so that the seam allowances will be going in opposite directions when you come to sew the blocks together. So this one has the seam allowance going to the left. We're going to want to lay this one so it's going to the right. If you had it laid this way, now they're both going to the left, you can just turn it upside down. So you can go throughout the whole thing and make sure they're all facing different directions if you like. I also would recommend, once you get to this stage, take your cell phone and take a picture of the quadrant. It's easier to tell on your cell phone if you have all the blocks laid out in the correct order. 
Also, if you sew a row and you want to put it back and you're not sure it's in the right spot, you can check your phone. It's a very handy tool for that. Here's why I take the picture. When I looked at my picture, I can see there's something wrong over here. I don't have two mirror images. This is supposed to have this kind of block right here. You may have noticed some of my past videos where I get a block in wrong. It can happen to all of us, but taking that picture and double checking, it's a really good way to make your quilt correct. Now these are pretty small rows, so it's easy to pick them up in order and take it right to the sewing machine. There's only four blocks here, so I'm not gonna pin it or mark it. I'm just gonna take these four blocks right over to the machine. Gonna spread them out just a little bit and let's take these first two, stitch them together. There's absolutely nothing to match here. It's very easy. And in this first row, all the seam allowances are going to go to my right. Now we can stitch this onto here. Again, no matching, nothing fancy. They're the same size. To the right. And we'll add that same, that last piece there. And then I'm going to put this row right back where it came from, double check my picture, make sure it's facing the same way it was when I picked it up. That's where it's gonna go. Now I'm gonna do the next row and all of those seam allowances are going to go the opposite way. I'm gonna keep making rows changing directions each time with the way the seam allowances get laid. Then it'll be very easy to sew those rows together. Now this quilt is nice because I do have a big table here, but not everybody has a big table. But we only have to lay out one quarter of it at a time. So you can just work on one quarter at a time. And when that's done, you can move to the next quarter. I've got all four quarters done. And all we have to do now is spin this one around. It goes in that far corner. And then we'll spin this one around. Now the quilt is ready to just do these last seams. We'll put some borders on it. We'll get it on the quilting machine. The borders are on the quilt. It's loaded on the machine. And now it's thread picking time. There's a lot of bright colors that will look good on here. And I do want a thread that's gonna show up this time. Now the purple, it will show up in the patchwork here. It'll show up in the light. It won't show up at all on that nice big border. So I think we should do something that has more contrast. Now the yellow, that'll show really nicely in the border. It'll show on this dark stuff. It'll show a little on the background orange that's another option that's going to show on there not too much on there we could go with pink that will show not as much i think the red might be my best option so i've got red on the inside border it's going to blend in there going to show up there and it'll show up very nicely on this patchwork here and on the background let's go with red this time for the quilting pattern i'm going to use one called pebbles. It's really a combination of big and small circles and I think that will look really good on the patchwork which is almost all squares and triangles.
the plaza quilt is all done and it is so nice to have such a fancy quilt that was made with those two simple blocks it's just that four patch and the half square triangle repeated over and over but look at that nice secondary pattern you get on there a nice bold geometric pattern now the quilting it shows up quite nicely on this light background you can see it all over the quilt now it blends in in the borders and in the dark areas but look at that nice texture there it just gives it a lot of life for the backing i used a surprise fabric this is a surprise it's a k facet print nice big bold print but the colors are echoed with the solids that we've got on the top and it's so nice to flip it over and get a whole new look this is the extra long twin and it really is nice and long and that's great if you want to wrap yourself up on the couch or use it on an extra long twin bed thanks for watching our video today on how to make the plaza quilt we hope you enjoyed it now we're going to have another giveaway this is a quilt pattern called five star and it's made with a beautiful Kaufman collection called Bella Mariposa. It's got butterflies all over it. And you can see the five stars. Nice metallic print on the back side. And it's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you have to do is click the link below that says giveaway. Put in your name and your email address. And remember, we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting. Remember when I said, take a picture of your quilt before you sew it all together. So if you make a mistake with the layout, you can fix it. Thought I had mine all laid out correct, but you see where it's light here, 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 but not here. This whole block here should have been turned one time and I did not catch it. I didn't catch it when I laid it out. I didn't catch it till the whole quilt was already quilted. Now, if this happens to you, don't do what I just did. Don't point out where your mistake is. Just be happy with your quilt. I'm very happy with this one and that's what quilting is all about. Having fun making quilts.